What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. In the recent update, pets have become much more than just an ability and a little bit of DPS. They are now a wonderful stat stick and in addition to everyone's builds that you're going to want to pay attention to. Now as you see here, I'm getting 22,000 hero damage and 22,000 defense power from this pet. That is just an enormous amount of stat right on top of what's already there on my monk. Now, the pet empowerment stats are going to be affected by three things. One thing would be the quality level of each individual role. The second would be your personal gear score on that hero. And then the third, of course, would be the level of the pet itself where previously folks would just level pets up to unlock the ability, now you're going to want to take these pets all the way up to get them to level 60 and get the maximum benefit out of it. Now, the pet empowerment stats can be chosen. You can put whatever you want on it. Um, if you go over here and just reroll, if you say you want to get rid of hero damage, you can always use your empowerment stats reroll tokens to change to something completely altogether. If you wanted ability power, uh, defense health, anything at all that you want on your hero, you are able to switch to. Now this is also going to tell you the quality roll. Um, as you see here, the base quality roll in this one is between 315 and 350. 350 is going to be the max for every pet and it doesn't matter whether it's blue, legendary, common, anything at all, 350 is still going to be the maximum. So the individual pet quality is more of a vanity thing. What it does affect is the minimum roll. So the minimum roll is going to be slightly higher on a legendary pet versus a common pet. Now, as I mentioned, this stat can be just a significant boost just added right onto the top. Uh, for this particular hero, this is my Nuke Monk, of course, so it's my active DPS hero. Plus, periodically, I will build with this hero. Uh, so in this situation, I wanted hero damage and defense power. Now we look at that 22,000. Uh, that, of course, is based off of my hero score of 11,000, as this hero is in full Chaos 8 gear fully upgraded. Now, if we take that same pet and we move it to, say, a hero with 6,000 hero score, we see now those pet empowerment stats are only 12,000. If we move it over to, say, a hero with 1,300, the stats are even lower at 2,600 a pop. And then if we move that all the way over to someone in full campaign gear, the stats are going to be only 700 apiece. So your individual hero score for that hero will directly affect the stats on that pet. Now with this in mind, this means that you're now going to want to put gear on your builder only heroes. So what's the best thing to do there? Well, in my situation, I'm doing Chaos 8 Expeditions right now, so I'm finding a lot of Chaos 8 gear laying around. Looks like I missed a piece there. Um, just grab whatever is off the ground. Uh, in this example, this particular monk is my Boostar monk. I don't do anything else with it. I never play this monk actively, so I don't really care what the monk is using. So I'm just going to grab anything off the ground from the tier that I'm in, stuff that I would normally just sell off, and throw them on there to boost up my individual hero score for that hero, where I can get more empowerment stats off of my pet. So hopefully this helps folks understand pet empowerment stats a little bit and how important they are to you. It's basically a huge power gain for free, y'all. Uh, you've got the pets anyway. Just get your pets leveled up, get stats you want on them, and take advantage of the free stat that Chromatic gave us in this last update. So thank you all once again, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.